Interesting. So, she. Most recently, before I started WFMA, I was part of a group down in Plymouth called Plymouth Fight Night. Uh, they do pretty much what we do, only with more danger. Uh, so I did that for a, for a couple of months before I moved to Winchester to start university. Uh, I was invited by one of my friends who had met the guys who ran it on a night out. And I had spent a lot of time thinking I would never do that. It looks really dangerous, really stupid. And then ended up at a birthday party of one of the guys who ran it and gave it a go and had a whale of a time. Uh, and so it was pretty much hooked after that. Um, and so I had a bet with one of my friends from the group in Plymouth that um, I couldn't start another group uh, in Winchester. And the plan was that if I could, we'd kind of spread and there'd be franchises all over um, the country. It's definitely different from anything else I've done. We never had a sort of a sword fighting group back home. So it's, it's interesting because it's, it's not quite a, uh, a family group, but it's, it almost feels like that. There's so many new freshers in with, with me that it's, you kind of feel like you're part of the group and no one's excluded. I have Tourette syndrome, uh, so I often make, a, I have a repertoire of noises that I make, one of which is a, a grunting noise in, from the back of my throat that I can't control. Uh, and I often do it without noticing. So we were doing a, a sword fighting session and I was doing this noise off the scale every four or five seconds there was this grunt. One of my new friends mentioned that it sounded like a velociraptor because I was prancing around with a staff making this high-pitched grunting noise. So I, I looked and sounded like a, a velociraptor from Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> <Bastard>. <laughs> I've never fought with this before. I sucked at it. Yeah, but this is. Again. For the most part, when we're sparring, so there are certain areas that don't count as hit zones. So, for example, anything from the elbow down doesn't count, and from the knee down doesn't count. You can hit someone in the forearms, and then you carry on fighting, because it doesn't count as a hit, because we're trying to encourage people to hit to the torso, to the shoulders, to the back, the thighs, proper, serious, getting in close, landing blows. We can't do headshots, um, because at the end of the day, we don't want to kill each other. We're fighting for fun, we're not fighting to hurt each other. So one of the things we have implemented is the running of shenanigans. And shenanigans solve two purposes. Uh, a, it punishes the person for hitting the other person in the face. And also, because the person who was hit in the face calls the shenanigan, it kind of stops the, the need for revenge. Uh, so what happens when you run a shenanigan? If you're outside, you run twice around the field, so it's... That adds an element of revenge there, but also an element of punishment, and it stops people from then kind of escalating the violence, hitting each other harder and harder. I think that we have a fairly easy going nature and I think partly that does develop because we are not a strict sports society and we're not a strict martial arts society, we're a bit of a mixture of both. As it stands currently, the university knows about us, um, but they're quite willing to put up with us because 
what we do is both quite unusual. There is, to the best of my knowledge, no governing body for what we do. Although it would have meant less funding for the society, it meant more freedom to not be in a pistol society. It's only if there's a room you're looking at, if it does that, it will... The people who joined us for the first time last year, um, and there were a few that were great. There are a few other people who got really enthusiastic and then have kind of petered out. Uh, and in an ideal world, what would have happened is last year they would have been starting to take positions like uh, being an administrator or social secretary, something like that. The main sort of thrust behind me trying to be president is I really want to make sure that this, this close-knit but opening feel doesn't, doesn't die off. Because I went to a couple of clubs throughout until my school years and there was never that sort of, that sort of comradeship that you get in FMA. something completely different. Um, we don't take ourselves as seriously and I think you can see that from coming along and joining the sessions. Yes, people are kind of seriously fighting and really enjoying themselves and they're kind of trying to learn new techniques and they're working their asses off and most of the people are burning up a serious sweat. But equally, we are perfectly capable of sitting around and just having a laugh and a joke and having a chat for most of the session. It happens and I wouldn't get rid of that for the world.